Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy. And he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and to have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you are standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I am encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I'm standing in need of. And so this evening, before we get into the message, we do have a song for you. I just want you to remember that you can write to us and to send to us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones, and we will add their names to the prayer list. I will pray for them, encourage you to pray for them, and everyone in the viewing audience to pray for them as well. And you can send those names to The Gospel Truth, P.O. Box 3944, Berkeley, California, 94703. Once again, that's The Gospel Truth, P.O. Box 3944, Berkeley, California, 94703. All right? So... This evening, we are foregoing our prayer list, but we do have a song for you. But before we get to that, I want to remind you that we understand that the economy has made a great change, and it's doing great. Lots of jobs were uh, developed here in California, actually more than the ones in Texas. And, you know, the governor came here from Texas, and he was trying to take people away. But anyway... I know that perhaps there are still some people who are unemployed, so I just want to refer you over to eastbayworks.org, and if you happen to be in need of employment or maybe seeking a better job, you will go to eastbayworks.org, and you'll look up the one-stop career center that is nearest to you. There you can go over and find yourself in a world of jobs. They have job leads, telephones, fax machines, uh, computers, uh, job leads, and uh, uh, resume writing workshops where they can critique a resume and assist you with a mock interview so that you won't have uh, so much anxiety when you are before a prospective employer, all right? So remember, that's eastbayworks.org, and you can bring up the one-stop career center that is nearest to you. And then again, we do know that people do come to us from time to time. I know it happens regularly. And they are in need of some assistance, and perhaps you may be able to assist them. Maybe you can't. If you can, then of course you do what you can. But if you can't, then by all means, refer them to 211. 211 is a referral source, and once the individual calls that number and states to the representative what their particular need is, then they will be directed to the source that will help them to eliminate that particular need. So remember, that's 211, and they can get the help that they are in need of, whether it's a child care program, after school program, food service program, utility assistance, or a rental assistance, services for battered women, and much, much more. So remember, that's 211. Okay, so now before we get into the message, we have a song tonight. We have standing by for us, the Friends in Christ, and they're going to be singing for us tonight, All of My Trials. So without any further remarks, the Friends in Christ and All of My Trials. All of my trials.
certainly would like to express our appreciation to the friends in Christ for that fine version of all of my trials, all of my trials. And when you come to grips with it, it is only Jesus who can help us to eliminate whatever the trials in our lives might be. I would like to invite your attention tonight to the book of Luke, uh, the eighth chapter. And in Luke, the eighth chapter, and beginning with about verse number 22, uh, we find these words that are written. Now, it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came unto him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water to obey him. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. It's from these verses this evening that I have selected to call our lesson, Where is your faith? Where is your faith? And in this day and time, we can recognize that men and women put their faith in a lot of different things and a lot of different places. So I'm just curious tonight to know where is your faith? And, and, and the basis of this is the fact that Jesus himself had 12 apostles, men whom he had uh, performed various miracles in their presence, and he even allowed them to do uh, some miracles as well. And they were uh, filled with the miraculous portion of the Holy Spirit. Well, on this particular occasion, they uh, got into a ship, and Jesus had instructed them by saying, uh, let us go over to the other side of the lake, all right? And as you followed the reading, they did. They launched out, and they began to sail the ship over to the other side of the lake. Well, in the meantime, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, being both human and divine, he found himself being somewhat uh, fatigued. Uh, so the Bible says that he fell asleep. Uh -huh. and, and, and because he was sleeping and uh, resting and restoring his uh, much needed energy, uh, there came a storm in the midst of the lake. The Bible says that there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they and and the lake and they were filled with water and they were in jeopardy now in other words when this storm came down they were in the midst of the lake and uh, the storm arose and the bible says it filled they were filled with water in other words water was getting in the ship it had taken on she a water and, and the apostles, yes, these same 12 men that Jesus had hand-selected, uh, they were all of a sudden in fear. Now, to me, I can't quite understand it, but now I wasn't there. Uh, but what, what I know now about Jesus, I would have recognized that if he was on board, that there would have been nothing that could have happened to me because Jesus was on board. But nevertheless... Uh, they did have a fear, and as a result, they, somebody said, wake up, Jesus. And so they rose, and they went, and they woke up, Jesus. And uh, we found that as a result of them, they came, and they, uh, they woke him up and, and, and said to him, Master, Master, we perish. In other words, 
They were paranoid. They were thinking that the ship was going down. All right? But then Jesus arose. The Bible says he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased. In other words, Jesus raised up in the boat and said to the, to the winds, cease, and to the waters, be still. And there was a great calm that came aboard. And then he said unto them, he asked them, where is your faith? In other words, I believe Jesus was saying, now look, I'm on board here. What are you worried about? And so tonight, I want you to understand that if your faith and trust is in the Lord, then there's nothing that you should be worried about. You should be, uh-huh, your faith should be anchored in the Lord. And remember, Jesus said, I'll go with you always, even to the end of the world. So I want to know tonight, where is your faith, uh-huh? Sometimes we put our faith in things that we have, uh, in friends and people that we know, or in our family members. I'm wondering tonight, where is your faith? And then the Bible says they were uh, afraid. And then being afraid, they wondered, saying one to another, uh, what manner of man is this? For he commands even the winds and the water to obey him. Now, that's something that we should look at. See, because here we are, human beings. God has given us a mind, an understanding, and yet God has given us some, some commandments, and yet we won't obey them. But then the wind and the waves, the water, uh, the elements, when Jesus speaks, they obey him. Could, wouldn't it be great for us to learn a lesson from that? If Jesus speaks to the wind and says, cease, and if Jesus speaks to us and says, don't do that, it would be great for us to be obedient to him. See, it's important that we obey the Lord. So we need to understand the question tonight is, where is your faith? All right? So I came by tonight to let you know that our faith should be the basis of our obedience. It's always important to obey the Lord because if you fail to obey him, then you're going to have some trouble. There will be a storm that will come in your life. And, and let me just take you over to the book of Jonah. I know some of you remember Jonah. You see, uh, Jonah was a man, a prophet, a preacher that God had selected, and he told Jonah he wanted Jonah to go down to Nineveh and preach against it. But you see, Jonah had some other thoughts in mind. He decided that he didn't want to do what the Lord had asked him to do. So the Bible says he got on a ship and headed uh, to uh, Tarshish. And so um, he, he was defying God. God wanted him to go to Nineveh, but he decided he was going to flee from the presence of the Lord. You should know tonight that you can run, but you can't hide from God. He sees everything. He knows everything. He is everywhere at the same time. Somebody said he sits high and looks low. Well, that may be so, but the bottom line is he knows everything, all right? And so Jonah, he had faith in God, but then he thought he could run away from God. And then what happened? Another storm came up. This storm came up in the midst of the sea. And so Jonah was down in the ship, and he was fast asleep. So when the storm arose, the mariners, the sailors, they began to toss off their wares in an effort to try to uh, make the, uh, the ship uh, seaworthy, to keep it afloat. But they realized that that just wasn't good enough. So the captain went down and found Jonah asleep, and and, and to ask him, wake up, old sleeper. And then we find that Jonah made it clear. He said, it's because of me that this is happening to you. He says, so what you need to do is throw me overboard. And, of course, the, the captain, he was a great humanitarian, and he didn't want to do that. So they continued to throw off their wares in an effort again to keep the vessel seaworthy. All right? But realize that that wasn't going to do it. And you can read this over in the book of Jonah, the first chapter yourself. And so finally they did. They threw Jonah, Jonah overboard. And as soon as they threw him overboard, the Bible says there was a calm. In other words, they had to get the sin off of the ship 
in order for them to have smooth sailing. Now tonight, you might have a storm tonight in your life. Something may be occurring, and it may be occurring simply because you fail to do exactly what God has required of you. And if that is the case, you need to understand that the Lord is not pleased with you. And if you go over to the book of Proverbs, uh -huh, the first chapter, here we can read about Solomon. You know, Solomon, he was the wisest man to live, and he uh, talks about the Lord and how he's going to deal the Bible says says in the Proverbs, the first chapter, verse 24, because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. In other words, God said, I called you. You didn't answer. I stretched out my hand to you and you didn't, you disregarded me. All right. He says, but you have set it not my counsel. Everything that I told you you should do, you set it aside. You had your own way, your own methodology of doing what it is that you wanted to do. And he says, none of you would accept my reproof. All right? So then God says what? I will also laugh. <laughs> I'm going to laugh at your calamity. I will mock your fear when your fear cometh. He says, I'm going to mock you. And he says, and uh, uh, then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me early, but they shall not find me. Oh, they're going to go about and try to do everything they can, just like the sailors on the ship with Jonah. They tried to throw the stuff overboard and trying to make things keep going. And then you might come up with a plan. You might devise a plan that you think is going to help you to be successful. But if you haven't done things according to God's will, I don't care what your plan is. It's just not going to succeed. So you have to trust in the Lord to make sure that you do things that the Lord has required of them. The Bible says, for they hated knowledge. When somebody brought them some knowledge, they didn't want it. They did not choose to fear the Lord. Well, we can do it our way. And however we do it, it's going to be okay. But it was not in accordance with God's word. They failed to fear the Lord. They would none of my counsel. He said, you wouldn't accept anything that I gave you. And he despised all of my reproof. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices? For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of the fool shall destroy them. This is what God says. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. You just need to understand, you, you can't cut any corners when it comes down to being obedient to God. Where's your faith tonight? Is it in your automobile? Is it in your house? Is it in your husband? Is it in your wife? Is your faith in your children? Uh, is your faith in your job? Where is your faith tonight? I'm wondering, do you have an answer? Can you say, my faith is in the Lord? And then I want you to recognize that even if you can say tonight, my faith is in the Lord, then I would ask you to ask the Lord to increase your faith, to make it stronger so that you can surely accomplish all the things that God has scheduled for you to do, all right? So as I said, our faith should be the basis of our obedience. Our faith should be anchored in the Lord. We should not let anything separate us. I think it was Paul said, I will let nothing separate me from the love of the Lord. And things might happen. You understand? Things in this life may happen from time to time. And, and we might find ourselves in a situation where it might be, hard for us to understand what's going on and we might recognize these as being some trials and sometimes the trying of our faith you know that help us to work uh patience and we just need to keep in mind that that paul he made it clear i'll let nothing separate me from the love of god he uh, nothing that's on this earth uh, no height nor depth nor anything or even that which might come now as long as we're living today you know with people are always talking about ufos all right, and, and alien beings. Well, there might be something to come because Paul said, neither things that are present now nor things that are to come, I will not let them separate me from the love of God. So I trust this evening that you will recognize and understand that your faith always must be in the Lord. And then 
Uh, that's, uh, let's go over there. There's Romans 8, chapter, verses number 35. I believe you can hear him say it more clearly. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? All right, who? Shall anybody? Then he says, shall tribulations? All right, we're going to have some hard times. Is that going to keep you from loving the Lord? Uh-huh. He said, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or persecution of the sword. Then he says, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. I'm wondering this evening, where is your faith? All right? Somebody might say, well, you know, I was loving the Lord and everything was going all right. And then all of a sudden my husband left me or my wife left me. And then I just became a nervous wreck. Then your faith was in them and not in the Lord. All right. So again, our faith should be anchored in the Lord. Our faith should be a light to others. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. He said, you have to let your light so shine. So that men might see your good works and glorify the Father. So we have to be a light to those who are in darkness. Our faith should be the basis of our hope. Our hope is in Jesus. And he's promised us that if we stay with him, that he'll provide us with a place in heaven. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there you may be also. Jesus himself said, have faith in God. So it is by faith, repentance, confession, confession, and baptism that you be added to the Lord's body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. I'm inviting you to join us again next week when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. I must express my sincerest gratitude and appreciation to the membership of the Body of Christ that meets here at 3354 San Pablo Avenue for their continued love for Jesus in their support of us getting this word out to those of you who are in darkness. So again, until next week, remember, if you listen carefully, you can hear by faith. Jesus knocking at your door. So until next week, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.